Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia Lynn Lowell. Automobile transportation is an important component of our modern day economy and lifestyle. But it also causes traffic congestion and air pollution. In order to reduce air pollution and traffic congestion, several cities around the world have tried a policy known as a driving restriction. In a typical driving restriction, a household is not allowed to drive their car during certain hours of certain days of the week, depending on the last digit of their car's license plate. For example, if my car had a license plate ending in the number 7, I might not be able to drive my car from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. However, if I still need to get to work, then I might end up driving during an unrestricted hour instead. If I end up driving during hours closer to the middle of the day, when there is more sunlight, then emissions from my driving may lead to more ozone, an air pollutant that requires sunlight to form. Thus, driving restrictions might actually lead to more air pollution, not less. Similarly, if I still need to go to the grocery store even when faced with a driving restriction, then once again, instead of reducing my driving, I might end up driving during an unrestricted hour instead. And if my favorite grocery store is closed during these unrestricted hours, then I might end up having to drive further away to get to a grocery store. Moreover, that grocery store that is further away might not have all the items I need or might be on the way to another store I like. So, as a result of the driving restriction, I might end up driving more, not less. And that additional driving might lead to more air pollution, not less. Driving restrictions are therefore a well-intentioned policy that may unfortunately have the unintended or even perverse consequence of increasing rather than decreasing air pollution and traffic congestion.